my name is D.R. Harrington. And I'm the co-program director here at Orbit Startups. And we are super excited to welcome you to Orbit 2 Demo Day. Today, we have five global startups coming to you from Singapore, India, uh, Bangladesh, and Nigeria. And our founders are very experienced with over four founders with prior exits. To date, these founders have achieved almost $2 million in sales, with some of those startups growing at 40% month on month. Now, before we get to the startups, William Balbean is going to tell us a little bit about the Orbit ecosystem and our fund SOSV. But prior to that, we're going to have our VC VIP panel come up here. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our panel up here and we're going to set up some chairs. Thanks so much. Um, so super psyched to have our first in-person uh, demo day uh, in Singapore since February 2020. Um, so hopefully there'll be many more. Uh, and we don't get like, uh, I don't know, the next variant that uh, makes us all go crawl back into our homes, right? So I'm um, super happy to have Ron and uh, Gwen, Gwendolyn here. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So Gwendolyn, kick off. Hi, everyone. Thank you, William, and the rest of the Orbit uh, team. My name is Gwen. I see so many familiar faces here. <laughs> Hi. I'm investment director at BNB Chain. So BNB Chain is the largest Web3 the first billion users into blockchain and crypto. My previous life has always been in technology and media, wearing several hats of founder, entrepreneur, global market expansion, so operator, investor. And today I'm excited to talk more about everything from building to investing to, to the current markets, you know, more building and more, more, more signal, less noise in this market, which is great. Thank you so much. Awesome. So Ron, recent transplant, no? Sort of, I guess sort <laughs> of. Um, so I'm Ron Tao. Um, so I run Sky9 Capital. We're a venture capital firm. Uh, William and I, I haven't seen two years, three years. Yeah, COVID. So I, I read about all this uh, great stuff, great postings on Instagram, Orbit. There's a delay. Um, it's, if it's on the chain, it wouldn't happen. It's, uh, so, um, I, you know, I, I've been living here for six years, believe it or not. Yeah, living in Singapore for six years. Um, and, Throughout COVID as well. What? Throughout COVID. Well, in COVID, I kind of hide out here, you know, because my, uh, my, most of my team members are in China. So, I, I, you know, it's hard to tell where I am in, during COVID, but I, I hide out here. Um, most of my work is in China uh, for the last, let's say, uh, 18 years, um, investing in technology. Uh, internet, um, consumer, um, gaming, fintech in China. Um, and over the years, we have, um, you know, you, you do transition as an investor, as, as you, you, you're aware, uh, you know, we're, we're very active in Web3. Uh, we have a good relationship with uh, Binance and... Uh, uh, and BNB Chain. And BNB Chain. Uh, <laughs> it's the right chain to back. Um, and uh, we do quite a bit of work now in biotech. Uh, we're doing um, a lot of inf internet infrastructure and um, uh, semiconductors are really across the board. Uh, we set up an office now in Singapore. We have two people now here, uh, but most of our folks are in Beijing, Shanghai. We have a person in San Francisco. Uh, I think one trend that's really interesting is we're seeing entrepreneurs being more global. Uh, I think that that is uh, the, the trend we're betting on. Um, you know, uh, and I think in the US, entrepreneurs tend to be more very U.S. centric. Uh, I think in Asia, we tend to go after the global market. So we want to be there to support our global entrepreneurs with offices in multiple cities. Um, we're on our fifth set of funds. Uh, the last, the current fund is around 700 million U.S. dollars. Um, and, uh, you know, early in, in, in the fund cycle, we're ready to, uh, ready to deploy capital. Uh, typically, in the early stage, about a million, two million, uh, more growth stage, maybe 15 to 20 million. Awesome. Thanks. So um, trends. You know, the last three or four months have been really, really exciting. Uh, no, so, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for us, uh, we, we, in Q3, we're the number two most active VC in the world because uh, we uh, continue to invest. Uh, we're a big proponent of buy low, sell high. 
Uh, and at the early stage, we can be quite active. We've actually been waiting for this downturn for a while uh, because our check size is so small and our ownership requirement is so high uh, that when things get, you know, a bubble, you could say, uh, we get priced out of the market. Um, but uh, for, for, for you, Gwen, like what, what are you seeing the last three months? What do you think uh, if you have to look at your crystal ball, what's going to happen in the next three, six months and where should people be positioned? Well, we're already seeing the contagion spreading, right? So I think that's obvious. And what's also equally obvious is that a lot of companies will die. But that is actually was predicted or we've been seeing, we've been expecting this downturn. We've been expecting consolidation. We didn't expect, I think this, in my opinion, Black Swan event, but uh, we'll see more people die. So I think for projects and companies who are positioned well to write the next potentially one and a half years with runway, you should be prepared to start hiring. So recruit, recruiting over the next few months, I think would be very, very interesting, both from all the layoffs of, um, from big tech and web two big tech, as well as the upcoming, you know, death um, of, the, of the protocols in, in web three. Awesome. Ron, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think is going on? We were chatting about it outside. Uh, so great if you can share. What is going on? What's really going on, right? That's, uh, no, um, you know, we've been doing this for a long time and it's, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, um, CZ, your, your fearless leader is, is a good example of, uh, of a type of entrepreneur. I mean, uh, that someone should follow really, you know, fearless, really going after something they, he believed in, um, and, you know, really, uh, be able to, uh, so have a survival instinct, you know, how to survive through cycles. I think, um, you know, I, I, you know, if you're a young entrepreneur today, you know, I would, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, but I, I think web three is a good area to devote some time. Uh, it's, it's, a, despite all the issues, this is a, a real sector, a real phenomena. Um, and this is a perfect timing really because of uh, all the issues. I mean, otherwise there's really no opportunity. I think that's, that's one area we like. Um, another area we like quite a bit is really around software, software infrastructure. I mean, if you look at developers around the world, there's about 27 million developers, uh, super majority are in Asia, you know, in China, Southeast Asia, um, you know, you're, you're just as good as developers in Silicon Valley. You know, that's the, that's the fact. Um, can you build something for yourselves? Can you build something for a world's market? Uh, is something we're exploring with, with various talents. Uh, I think that's that's a good area. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time in, in hardware and also in biotech, but that requires a lot of expertise. Um, so if you're, you know, those are amazing areas to go after, um, but, you know, you would need to assemble teams um, and, um, you know, build expertise. So, um, but, you know, it's a good time to build um, and, um, you know, uh, but but be ready for for five to 10 years of hard work at least. Maybe William, I can add on a little bit more from the trend side of things, from, from more uh, what we're seeing at BNB Chain, right? So at BNB Chain, we're again called Web3 blockchain infrastructure. And a lot of projects we're seeing right now are super interested in building up the base infrastructure of blockchain in general. So we love a lot of core infra, software, software tooling, dev tooling, because um, as Ron said, there's so many developers out there. We are trying to get more Web2 developers to develop in Web3. Right, so we're looking for people who are thinking about usability, so UI, UX, and building tools that enable other developers to build better projects in Web3 and just you know better user onboarding. We are seeing, of course, as usual, a lot of applications as well across different spaces. We're seeing a lot of music projects trying to disrupt and give a lot more power back to the creators, enabling the fans to kind of partake in the success and journeys of their favorite artists as well. So a lot of different um, use cases that's been really been arising. And a lot of them actually really touch kind of all sides of the market, including many retail um, use cases slash mass crypto adoption potential. Awesome. So uh, Gwen, can you give an example of what's a project that you are a startup or a company that you recently got involved with uh, that uh, you're excited about and why? what made you excited? Um, so many. Where to start? I'll use the music example first and I'll give another one shortly after. So Corrite, C-O-R-I-T-E, 
is a music project that allows music musicians to crowdsource, uh, crowdfund their next upcoming album with their fans. So in the traditional world, it typically takes a lot of money to produce albums, right? They raise a lot of money, publishers all come in. But now uh, musicians can go direct. So one of the co co uh, key artists that Corright worked with was Alan Walker. So Alan Walker, if I play a song right now, Faded, most of you would, un would, 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 would understand it, would recognize it. So Alan Walker is one, one of the world's most famous DJs. And he, through Corright, managed to get 3,000 of his fans contributing like resources, money, as well as um, music stems in this particular case to kind of create like a promo video and, you know, so that Alan Walker could, again, crowdfund his upcoming album, Unity, with his fans. So this is extremely exciting, right? So um, a platform is cut out, right? And again, they'll be able to enable their fans to feel direct involvement and be directly involved with the album. So that's one Another project I'm very, very excited about is um, windcast.io. So this is a project that we invested in one year ago, and it combines NFT and live sports. So imagine now the World Cup, right? Imagine you're watching a World Cup on your laptop, and there's a penalty kick, right? And the penalty kick may be a beautiful goal or maybe fail. Whatever it is, imagine if you can live bid on your laptop for a potential NFT of that final goal. So like, like on the screen, right? So if this becomes a very like unique goal, whatever, whatever, this NFT in the future could be worth a lot of money. So what's amazing about Windcast is that it combines NFTs, which we all know here, we've all heard a lot about, which a lot of like legal IP potentials, a revolution in, in terms of that perspective. Right now, and, and yeah, coming up soon. So there's another one that I'm super excited. They should check out uh, Videoverse. So Videoverse works with uh, ESPN and, and all the sports I will, teams. I will check it out. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, they auto edit every single clip. Uh, so they remove the need for post-production uh, for all sporting events. So every single clip is done live and blasts out to the world live. Uh, so they signed uh, Premier League, Bundesliga, the Olympics, they signed Wimbledon. Um, Champions League, uh, et cetera. So basically live video editing, so to speak, behind uh, the scenes. AI-driven live video editing in real time without the content ever leaving the service of the owner. Thank you. Yeah, cool. So, Ron, what, what, what have you been up to? What's exciting? Uh, it's been pretty active, multiple spaces. Um, the, the few recent deals, one, one is in biotech, um, expert, experts in genetics that's... Um, able to show um, in, in animals, you can uh, regenerate uh, nerves, which is very difficult. Um, so, to, you know, Alzheimer's and glaucoma, various very difficult, uh, very, very difficult diseases can be potentially treated. You know, this is a cross-border team, team in China, team in the U.S. Uh, on the software side, um, we, we seeded a deal that's um, kind of like a, it's a collab collaboration platform that allows um, brands especially electronics makers in China, you know, that's always trying to come up with new products, um, but allow them to have a platform where uh, potentially their users can help them give them ideas uh, or, you know, designers who are not part of your firm can, you know, can be contributing to new ideas and, and really, you know, sort of uh, uh, outsource the design work to, to the market uh, and uh, has the whole workflow to to um, um, to kind of you know be ahead of the curve in terms of design. Um, so it's a cross border team, cross border product, uh, huge market. So um, you know sort of uh, uh, flows into into the sort of the um, online collaboration space. Um, we're also thinking about some new ideas in Web three. Um, you know around uh, decentralized exchanges, around uh, you know cross chain type of uh, protocols, cross chain type of applications. Um, around security, um, you know, and also maybe around Aptos, some of the newer, newer layer ones, um, you know, not as good, but uh, as a uh, BNB, but they they're also have very good momentum. Um, these are new opportunities we're exploring to whether incubate or, or you know, fund small, uh, early startups. Okay, awesome. So let's give a big round of applause for our amazing VC panel. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, so uh, Gwen, Ron, have a seat. All right, thank you so much again to uh, Gwen, Ron, 
for being here, for sharing some of your insights and trends about what's happening. Uh, next up, we're going to have William come up and share a little bit about the Orbit ecosystem and our fund SOSV. Over to you, William. Thanks. So uh, rebranding is never easy. Uh, we just had to rip off the Band-Aid. Uh, so welcome to Orbit Startups. Um, it's a combination of MOX and China Accelerator, the first startup program in all of Asia. Um, so we're very much global. Um, so we're no longer focused on just uh, geographies, just China or just Asia, um, but our portfolio companies are all around the world. Uh, so we have Hacks for hardware, Indie Bio for biotech, uh, and then Orbit is internet and software. And we are SOSV with 1.5 billion in assets under management. Our offices are all around the world. Uh, and we're increasingly uh, opening up. Uh, hopefully someday we can have one here. Um, but uh, we're Shanghai, Taipei, uh, Delhi, and KL right now across Asia. Um, so in terms of activity, we invest early stage in a large number of companies. So we're the most active early stage VC in the world. And again, that's spread globally. Uh, it's a little hard to track because a lot of our US companies are actually global companies. They're just domiciled. Uh, for example, we're the number three most active VC in Singapore, but a lot of our companies in Singapore are actually operating across the region. Um, some fun facts, we're the most active VC in Pakistan, uh, very, very active across Southeast Asia. Uh, Singapore went from six to three. Uh, and uh, continuing to uh, to uh, to expand. In terms of sectors, um, we're really focused on three mega trends. Right, one is economic independence. Uh, so consumers are using technology in frontier and emerging markets to really change our lives. We're taking what we learned in India, and in Indonesia, and in China, where hundreds of millions of people use technology to come out of poverty. Uh, and grant them or give them that opportunity for economic independence. The problem is that in some of these countries, they destroy the environment in the process. So how do you help people come out of poverty without screwing up the economy? The third thing is that a lot of people ended up with lifestyle diseases when they came out of poverty. They basically did went from a vegetable diet to a really heavy fat diet. Uh, and so we're focused on not just um, economic independence, planetary health, but also human health. Uh, so where does that come in? Well, it comes in in food tech, it comes in in hardware, it comes in in AI and supply chain, uh, and it comes in in health tech. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about, you know, buy low, sell high. So as of Q3, we're the number two most active VC in the world, up from number four last year. Um, we write small checks. Uh, and we take relatively a lot of equity. Uh, so we invest usually our first check is $150,000. Uh, the reason why people work with us, the startups work with us, is we provide those core kind of program services. So the mentors, many of our, whom are here today, thank you so much. Uh, we have growth, data-driven decision-making. So we're really about traction first, fundraising later. And then, of course, uh, we help with fundraising. So thank you all for being at Orbit to Demo Day. Um, we could not do it without our mentors. These are volunteers. Um, they have messed up many things and succeeded at, at least one thing. Uh, and we really appreciate people like uh, you know Han Mun being a, an amazing mentor. Thanks. So above and beyond that program, we had to differentiate. We had to change. You know, VCs invest in innovation, but we're really focused on innovating VC. Um, so we have a 14-person enterprise sales force that helps our startups sell into our corporate partners. Uh, so Unilever, J&J, AB InBev, Nestle, P&G, we're doing pilots and POCs. Uh, and two out of those five actually invested in our fund. We have 27 multinationals that invested in our fund. So think about it like a one-stop shop for partnerships and sales into large corporates around the world. The second thing, and this is pretty unique, is we try to copy uh, from China to the rest of the world. So Xiaomi, most people think it's a hardware company, but it's actually an internet company disguised as a hardware company. They give away their phones for a 0 to 5% gross profit margin. But for every phone that they sell, they make $300 US in internet revenue. So again, it's an internet company disguised as a hardware play. So for us, we 
didn't have a few hundred million dollars to start our own handset brand, but we went to our corporate partners and partnered with them and connect startups, uh, consumer startups with our corporate partners such that our startups get free customer acquisition, free user acquisition. So as you know, 62% of all VC money goes to customer acquisition, user acquisition, marketing. And our goal is to replace the need for that funding capital and have CAC zero. Um, so, so far we've invested $51 million in Orbit startups. Uh, since then, we've helped our companies raise follow-on funding of 716 million. Uh, and we helped our companies with basically a CAC zero scale to 143 million monthly active users. And those are for the most part unique. Um, we couldn't do it without our partners. So a lot of these companies here are the companies that give that free user acquisition uh, to our startups. And they don't do it for free forever. Uh, that our corporate partners in return get engagement and they get lifetime revenue share back, right? So promotion for revenue share. Um, sometimes we call it SaaS, uh, super app as a service. Yeah. So um, we have a very large portfolio of our 220 active portfolio companies, and uh, we're going to introduce a, a few of the new ones here today at Demo Day. Um, before we do that, I'll just point out three of them. So Boost Capital helps banks and non-banking financial institutions launch very quickly a microloan service, right? So you, without any app, you know, without any download, um, you can uh, enable a bank to immediately give a micro loan to a farmer or a small business person. So they've signed one regional bank, they've signed one wallet, uh, and they're already launched. Uh, they grew 4X uh, in the last uh, four quarters uh, and looking to expand from their first market uh, across uh, to many markets. So check out Boost Capital. Uh, they're raising a, a seed round now. Um, the second one, is Kutlu. So we're all about taking what we learned in China and other markets and bringing it to the rest of the world. So India doesn't really have a Taobao. Uh, so we brought uh, our investment into Kutlut and brought expertise uh, from China to India to create a marketplace where we enable market sellers, small sellers, SMEs, uh, basically anyone to start selling online for the first time. They have over 800,000 sellers uh, doing uh, about 10 million monthly GMV. And the revenues, uh, net revenue, gross profit has basically tripled in the last four months uh, because we're helping uh, these market sellers not just sell their own products, but also giving them the supply. And that extra supply really juices up the margin. Uh, so Coot Loot uh, Series A was led by a bunch of ex Alibaba uh, folks from China, and we're looking at Series B. And last but not least, uh, in the metaverse uh, and Web3, uh, one of the biggest problems is creators. You know, creators uh, have been ill-used by big internet for a very long time. Uh, they bring fans, they bring engagement, but they get paid pretty much nothing, right? So how do you help uh, a creator uh, make money? Uh, during COVID, it was even worse because all the live concerts went away. So uh, Zebra is a platform that partners with big celebrities and creates a digital avatar of that celebrity. Uh, and then manages and runs that avatar. So as Warren Buffett says, the celebrity for the first time can make money while they sleep. This celebrity can perform in online concerts, inside of video games, uh, appear in TV shows, uh, and uh, they can sell online. They can do just about everything. The first one was launched inside of China with uh, Da Zhang Wei. Uh, and the avatar is called actually called Zuki. Um, when they launched the first five days, he had 30 million views. Uh, with no spend. Uh, now that the avatar has 150,000 followers, we're launching our second one in December. And uh, Tim, whose last name I cannot remember, who won an Oscar for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, will be managing uh, that team uh, for that second avatar. Uh, so if you have a, uh, you, uh, if you want to bring celebrity avatars into your ecosystem, uh, please let us know. Uh, and outside of China, of course, we can do fun things like uh, celebrity NFTs. So uh, with that, I'm going to kick it back to TR. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Thank you again, William. And again, to our VC panel. Now it's time to meet the startups. Now I've got one logistic thing to get out of the way uh, before you do so. So please, if you are in the room and you are an investor, scan one of the QR codes up there on the wall. 
okay, so that you can give a response about your interest in some of the startups that are about to come through. All right, and those of you online, if you are an investor online, you should see a pop-up at the end of each one of the demo day pitches. Again, please indicate your interest. That's why we're here. Okay, so without further ado, it is time to get to our startups. So I'd like to welcome to the floor our first startup, Frio Shop. Thank you, everyone. Meet Rohim. Rohim lives in Dhaka, the second largest city in our country. He ran a small retail shop in Greenwood, which is the most populated area in Dhaka. Every day he catered 150 customers, but it's not too easy to fulfill everyone's demand. Every day he was faced the same problem that is sells out, and his customer moved to his next competing store. And restocking is not easy as it seems. Every time he needs to go wholesale market by losing his working hour, it takes two hours to go towards to back and four hours deal with multiple suppliers. He uses local transport, which also costly. It takes three to five dollars. In the meantime, Rohim shop is closed for eight hours. It's not a single day story. In every month, he needs to restock six times because he has limited capital, limited shelf. So he would not be able to hold inventory for five days. In this inefficient process, he losing 1000 USD per month. We are Priya Shop, a B2B marketplace that enables small retailers connect supplier and distributor directly, access to their our, all catalogs, can place order easily and pay on delivery and also get access to trade financing. So let me show how it's worked. Rohim download our app from Google Play Store register himself. It's native language, so he easily can understand and navigate. Browse SQs by brands and categories. Just click and add to cart, review cart, and place order payment on delivery. After getting order, an automated purchase order generated to our suppliers. Supplier confirm inventory for Rohim. Our picker collect from suppliers and delivered to Rohim store within 24 hours. And we collect payment from Rohim. If Rohim eligible, we offer pay later solution for him. We take average 6% on every sales. Rohim is super happy because he don't need to shut down his store anymore and get best price from PeerShop platform. Now he able to earn 20% more than before. In Bangladesh, 97% retail transactions are executed through 5 million small retailers like Rohim. And the market worth almost $190 billion. It's an approved business model. There are lots of global comparable. Pure shop playing role in asset light model. We don't hold inventory. We act as an enabler. On the other hand, our competitor playing role in asset heavy model, which actually costly and less flexible. For solving this problem, we have a great team with 160 people from fintech, supply chain, FMCG, and e-commerce. Myself, Fashikul, expertise in growth hacking and e-commerce marketing. I'm three times founders with 16 years experience. And my co-founder, Deepti Mondal, comes from telco background with 10 years experience. She expert on customer acquisition, retention, and customer success. Right now, in our platform, we have 100 plus brands and suppliers, 20,000 retailers like Rohim. You'll be happy to know that 38% among them place order once in a week. I'm proud to announce that we generate $4 million GMB per month, and we are growing 10% week on week. And our current monthly revenue is 200,000 and it's growing. Hey, thank you so much, Ashikul and Frio Shop. Again, for those of you online, please click that button. Those in the house, please indicate your relative interest. And while you are doing so, our next startup slides are starting to come up. So for our second startup at Orbit 2 Demo Day, please help me welcome Create. Meet Shanti. Shanti lives in southern part of India in a place called Kumta. Shanti is a single mother with two children. She lost her husband 
in a serious accident on a construction site last year. Shanti has few employable skills, but no real job experience. Something what Shanti is really good at is making things with her hand. Shanti was taught from her father when she was young, a traditional artwork in India using rosewood. Shanti uses these rosewoods and sells these artworks to an agent who then picks up these rosewoods at one US dollar per piece. Shanti knows these products are of far more worth in the international markets. Now, this is something which she believes and understands that the larger e-commerce platforms do not entertain artisans and creators like Shanti because she has no required documents. They also can it, cannot penetrate the rural markets because delivery is an issue. Thus, Shanti is left with selling these products only to an agent and most importantly at one US dollar per piece. Now, this is where we come in. We are Create, India's largest dedicated marketplace for artisans and creators like Shanti. And I'll tell you how it works for artisans like Shanti. Shanti calls up a Create representative who then helps her in onboarding quickly and set up her own store, which thus makes Shanti a verified seller on our platform in less than two minutes. Now, once the store is set up live on the platform, a buyer makes a purchase, which is usually a personalizable product on the platform. A notification is sent to Shanti through SMS, if she is not tech savvy, WhatsApp, email, and also a seller app. Shanti then gets a notification to accept the order. Once she accepts the order, she starts making these customizable products. These products are then ready to be picked up. Shanti fills in where this has to be picked up from and is notified to the fulfillment partner with whom we have tied up. The product is then picked up from the place and delivered to the customer who is then satisfied with the product delivery. Customer makes, customer makes the payment. We charge 15% commission on every sale that happens. A real-time payout is then issued to the seller barring the commission and Shanti is now happy with the payout. She can control more pricing and most importantly, connect to the consumers directly. Like Shanti, there are 7 million registered artisans in India with over 200 million artisans already recognized in India. With this, the global handicrafts market is at a staggering 680 billion US dollars as on today, which is estimated to grow up to 1.2 trillion US dollars in the next five years. Create is India's largest marketplace dedicated for such artisans like creator, like Shanti and other creators. Now there are other platforms also in the similar space, but we are the only ones offering no documentation and most importantly, real time payouts to the seller. I am Vital, a two time founder with my previous exit through an acquisition in Germany. I have handled multi-million dollar accounts through KPMG and Bosch consulting. Prior to this, I have also had my own startup as mentioned. So I am backed by my stellar team who are entrepreneurs themselves. Sachin comes in with creative entrepreneurship skills. Sunaina comes with X Amazon. She has handled catalogs with over 100,000 products and more. And larger teams. Jeffrey has been looking after sales, has grown sales by five times in the last 12 months. We are backed by SOSV, we founder circle, the largest angel network in India. Elena Investments are early backers and expert dojo and some of the marquee angel investors who are partners at the big four organizations. So far, we have onboarded now a little over 23,000 artisans and creators out of which a whopping 70% of them have, have made at least one sale through the product to the platform. We have over 260,000 buyers and we have a strong retention rate of 56% month on month. We have grown 12% month on month in the last six months. And very recently we hit 300,000 US dollars. Okay. Thank you so much, Vital and Create. Again, those of you online, please ping that button. Those of you here in the audience, if you could, if you haven't already, scan that QR code and indicate your relative interest. All right. Thank you again, Create.
without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next startup, Nandy Labs. Let me introduce you to Burner Boy. He's an African pop singer that lives in Nigeria, but he has international recording contracts and he's racked up 30 million followers across social media and streaming platforms. His music has 4 billion streams and has generated $60 million for music labels and the streaming platforms, but he only sees a tiny fraction of those profits from the streams on Spotify and YouTube. So he resorts to concerts and touring, right? And he can even fill up Madison Square Garden, but his fans are global, touring is grueling, and even if he did, he can't reach all of his fans. But even if he could reach all of his fans through touring, he still wouldn't be able to untap the revenue from the bulk of his fans across Africa because he doesn't have the infrastructure tools to plug into the hundreds of African payment platforms. So he tapped Nandi. At Nandi, we work with African creators, media companies, and independent artists like Burner Boy to balance the scales in their favor, right? So we do this by helping them make more money by providing online fan communities that has one tool to plug into all of Africa's payment providers. We also help him distribute content online using uh, distributed exclusive content to his fans using the blockchain to prevent piracy. And then we also help him get more revenue through shared reward programs where corporates and brands sponsor them to get in touch with his fans. Now, when those fans come on to our platform for that exclusive content, they get reward tokens for every engagement that they do. They exchange those reward tokens for mobile airtime, mobile data, music, art, and the like. Let me show you how it works. So Burner Boy, he already is an approved account. So he just logs in. When he gets to the platform, he enters his details and he navigates to his community page. And he wants to add more content to distribute to his fans. He scrolls down on his community page and he adds the content. He decides whether he wants to add one piece or one item. He uploads the item scrolls down and he adds it to his community page. Now it's live. He wants to check that his page actually has the content on it and it looks the way he wants. He sees it's there, he confirms. Now he's ready to share it to his community. So he goes to the Nandy Hub, he clicks to grab that Nandy link and share it on his Instagram. Now his fans, once they engage with this Instagram link, they visit his community. They see his community page and they see all the content from their favorite artists that they wanna get. So they join the community. They enter in their details. This allows them to claim the, his community pass. They claim it, they see the content. There's still some behind a paywall, so they decided to buy it. They're gonna use their local payment card from Africa to enter or their crypto wallet. They enter in those details. Now they're using their card, their local cards. They put in their payment details, their billing information, and now they have access to this premium content from their favorite artists. They scroll down and they see it's there. Now, Burner Boy, after, he, after that transaction, it's, the money is instantly in his wallet. He can cash out in Naira, crypto, or whatever currency of his choice that we provide. The fans, they get sponsored rewards and they can claim it on our, on our rewards marketplace. So now when the brands sponsor the rewards, the fan comes in, they do what the, they fill in the requirements of the brand, they enter in their details, now they've earned their reward. They have a nice piece of art. Nandy makes money from co-developed projects like these, and from brands that want to show up toward these most engaged fan base. We take a 10% margin on the rewards that are distributed to the fans, and we make 10% on 
on transaction fees for the exclusive content distributed on our platform. With Nandi, fans can, with Nandi, African creators can earn their fair share because they can communicate and build out their fan communities, distribute exclusive content, and they can connect fans to become Africa's consumer, to, new, to become new consumers for Africa's brands. This market is a $20 billion African digital content market, and it's growing rapidly. Afrobeats, West Africa's pop music, is the fastest growing genre on streaming platforms. Nollywood, Nigeria's movie industry, is the second largest movie producing region in the world. Now, while the art is produced in Africa, 70% of the revenue is from global audiences. And Nandi, we're tailored to connect African creators to their fans because we provide localized payments in the key African markets. And we're the only platform that provides tailored consumer rewards. And my team is ready to take on this amazing opportunity. I'm Chinadu Onekwe. As an investment banker across Africa, I generated over $4 billion in transactions. As a founder, I, I had a startup, a FinTech in Nigeria. I scaled it to 13 regional countries and I had a successful exit for my investors. As a creative producer and investor, I invested in over 16 global creative startups. And I, while I was also producing art festivals, films and plays, my co-founder, Jibolu Ayodele, he was an investment banker as well. He did in technology, media, and entertainment. He did $30 billion in transactions. And then he went to work for Viacom Africa as an early employee. He helped them build out their marquee brands of BET, MTV, and Nickelodeon, helping them increase their subscriber count by 10 times. And we, since launching in last October, we've signed on Sony Music Africa the largest record label in Africa with over 500 million annual streams and well, 500 million annual streams. And we're gonna be their only community monetization platform for their entire roster of artists, including Burner Boy. We signed up the country of the Bahamas so that they can digitize their carnival art. And then they're gonna build a digital community that will provide uh, culture and tourism for their 2 million uh, annual visitors. And then we have signed up the Guardian Nigeria, one of Nigeria's national papers that has over 10 million monthly online readers. And we're going to provide that, uh, them a digital community that will digitize their daily paper and distribute it for the member, to their members with exclusive premium content. And we're backed by leading emerging market investors, SOSV, Flory Ventures. We're advised by celebrity musicians like M.I. Baga and producers like Viola Alabi. Okay, thank you again, Chinadu and Nandi Labs. For those of you online, please indicate your interest. Again, if you're in the room and you haven't done so, scan those QR codes and let us know your interest. Okay, without further ado, let's get to our next startup. I would like to welcome to the stage, Fulfilly. Meet Priya. Priya is from Chennai, India. Priya is a single mother of four children and Priya freelances as a delivery driver with a couple of local businesses. Priya earns $8 per day, but she spends on fuel, she spends on her repairs and spends on parking. Priya is left with $3.20 US per day. And on top of this, she spends long hours on servicing a vehicle, which takes up a lot of time, which she could spend on doing more deliveries. Priya does not know how to access high paying companies and she's stuck with lower paying companies. So poor Priya works 15 hours a day, six days a week in the heat and hardly takes any money back home to her family. We are fulfilling. Here are a delivery solutions platform for tier one and tier three and tier two cities in India. We provide a fleet of electric tuk-tuks, electric bikes, electric vans, and service stations to delivery drivers like Priya. And we also provide an inexpensive and easy to integrate delivery solutions platform 
for small and medium businesses, which brings down their cost by 40%. Delivery drivers like Korea spend 50% less and improve their services and businesses instantly get a state-of-the-art delivery fleet. Let me show you how it works. Priya downloads the Fulfilly app and enters her information. She's approved through a simple and efficient KYC process. Priya then picks up a vehicle from her hub within 24 hours. Priya then chooses from the numerous jobs that we have on our platform, which are optimized for her based on her location and distance. Priya immediately starts earning by choosing a delivery job. If Priya needs to charge her vehicles, she visits one of our nearest charging stations. If Priya needs to service her vehicles, Fulfilly sends a technician to her location or she visits one of our charging stations. If Priya doesn't like a particular job, no problem. She can choose from one of the numerous customers that we have, like Big Basket, Amazon, and any of the numerous small and medium businesses that we have. Small and medium businesses who can't afford the technology subscribe to us on a monthly basis and access our pool of drivers. This allows them to compete with enterprise segment customers. Delivery businesses on Fulfilly's platform get a state-of-the-art delivery fleet. Delivery riders like Priya earn two times as much as what they would, delivering just for a couple of businesses. The total market size for logistics in India is $250 billion. The total addressable market for Fulfilly is $12 billion spread across 5 million drivers just like Priya. 40% lower costs, 40% lesser emissions. Our fleet of electric vehicles generates far lower emissions and costs compared to gas-powered vehicles. Delivery drivers like Priya earn two times more than what they would due to our efficient hyper-local mapping, hubs, and she spends 50% less overheads and takes more money back home to her family. I'm Ashok. I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Fulfilly. I've worked with NASDAQ-listed companies like Freshworks and Make My Trip, handling GTM teams. I've hit targets of up to 8.5 million US dollars per year. And I've got co-founders such as Ranjit. Ranjit is a logistics veteran with 10 plus years of experience. And uh, he led his last startup to a successful exit. He's also got experience with companies like Delhivery and TCS. My co-founder and CTO, Prem, is from the Amazon and McKenzie's of the world. And he has developed my tech, tech stack from scratch. And he's worked on the SageMaker tool. And he's also been part of the Audible podcast team at Amazon. My last co-founder, Balaji, again, is an out-and-out logistics guy. He has worked with companies like NinjaCart and Nauta Road Transport. And he's onboarded 250 businesses on a monthly basis with a 95% retention rate. We are employing safe and environmentally friendly charging, battery swapping, and service stations. We have grown to around 350 drivers across Chennai with a 5% churn rate, which is far lower than the industry average of 20%. We have gone to 350 vehicles, and it's spread across multiple cities in Tamil Nadu right now in India. We have also been subscribed by 250 small and medium businesses. And we work with market customers like Delhivery, Amazon, Tata Big Basket, and Fire Foods India. We are doing around 4,000 daily deliveries, 30% month-on-month growth. 90% of our transactions from our customers are repeat. And I'm very proud to announce that we're doing $60,000 of monthly revenue. Again, a flat 30% month-on-month growth. All right. Thank you so much, Ashok, and for Philly. Again, for those of us who are online, feel free to indicate your relative interest in that button that pops up in the room. Get ready to submit because we're coming up to our last startup. So without further ado, please help me welcome to the stage, New Campus. Jaka is from Indonesia. He's the head of engineering at one of the fastest growing fintech companies in Southeast Asia. He's under a lot of pressure to deliver and recently grew his team from eight to 20 engineers. 
with a new headcount, he needs some of his key hires to step into management roles. But becoming a manager doesn't happen overnight and not everyone delivers. Jaka starts to receive complaints and he's finding himself spending more and more time micromanaging and putting out people fires. So he goes to HR, but they're way too busy focusing on recruitment and setting up payroll. He searches for leadership development programs online, but they're either too costly or most of the content caters for the US market. Jaka needs to set his people up for success. He can't do it alone. And in this hiring market, it's gonna be even more expensive to recruit and retrain. Thankfully, Jaka has New Campus. New Campus reinvents management training for the modern organization in Southeast Asia. Let me show you how it works. Jaka signs his team up to New Campus and purchases annual licenses for each of his management team to have access to our platform. His team joins live online four-week sprints that focus on key skills like delegation, coaching, providing impactful one-on-ones. They learn online with a global community of other managers from different industries and different organizations. And they get to practice new techniques and frameworks in a safe and inspiring environment. Jaka sees the impact immediately. His team is more autonomous. They're making decisions with confidence. And more importantly, they're giving him room to move forward. Half of his team that goes through the new campus platform gets promoted within the first two months. There's over 600 growing companies each year that raise venture capital. 4% of them raise over 50 million US dollars. That's over 250 young leaders that we can be upskilling each year. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are over 7,000 companies and over 12 million young leaders that we can be upskilling at the average age of 33 years old. The leadership development space is dominated by traditional business schools and local trainers that are outdated, they're expensive, and way too theoretical. New Campus is modern, New Campus is affordable, New Campus is practical. The management team has been building leadership programs and experiences for Southeast Asian tech companies for almost a decade. I'm Will, the co-founder head of school. I spent over the past eight years building in the education landscape. I started my career in management consulting. As I grew as an entrepreneur in the education space, I sold programs and platforms at 40 of the top universities in Southeast Asia, in China and the Middle East. Fei, our COO, is a globally renowned future of work and ed tech entrepreneur. She's built communities and partnerships with over a thousand of the top brands like Netflix and Gojek. She's also co-created over hundred courses that have been accredited worldwide. Eddie, our head of product, has built live learning platforms that have scaled to over 15,000 students. And on the side, he also advises in Singapore, Dubai, and Malta government on education reform and transformation. And Michelle, our creative director, has built a brand that has inspired over 2,000 new campus alumni to share their transformational journey with us. In her previous life, she's worked with brands like LVMH and Xiaomi across the US and in China. We've trained managers from over 400 of the most exciting tech companies in Southeast Asia, like Bukala Park, Carousel, One Championship, 40% of managers that go through our platform get promoted in the first two months. This year, we tripled our revenue to 1.1 million US dollars at a 92% margin on our core product. We're now able to close 15 new clients every two weeks with our sales flywheel. All right, thank you so much, Will and New Campus. By now, I hope you all know the drill, you know, respond online, for those of you who have been following us in person here, um, please submit now that you've done all of those different uh, indications from the QR code uh, so we can capture your interest. This concludes our live streaming portion on Facebook and YouTube. For those of you here in Singapore, we are ready to start the networking. So let's have a drink. Thank you.